Yep, so that leads us on to our first speaker. You, you don't need it, okay. So uh, Charlotte is, um, you're like a software engineer at Bloomberg, also a code bar organizer, and she's going to do a, this is like a collaborative talk, but we're going to do an emotional fitness sandbox exercise. Partly. Right. <laughs> Great. Um, so I uh, have worked as a software engineer full time for a bit less than a year. And before that, I was uh, same as a lot of you here, student at Code Bar. So definitely at the right place if you're interested in career change. Um, so since I started working as a software engineer, I think one reality became very clear that the work uh, can be quite solitary. So personally, I had uh, quite some emotional struggles, like coming from a sales background and uh, to like talking to clients every day to doing my own work by myself. Um, and um, that led me to study um, and read books on psychology and emotional intelligence in hopes of better managing my own emotions. And uh, hopefully that will lead to better productivity. And uh, there are some insights I would like to share with you guys here. Um, so I think one key takeaway I want you to have from this talk is that emotional intelligence is really a skill, is not an innate ability, right? So there are concrete exercises and techniques that we can use to improve our emotional intelligence. Um, so Google has spent millions of dollars researching its people and teams, trying to understand what led to highly productive individuals and teams. So they had this project called uh, Project Aristotle that led them to find the teams that perform the best. The team members actually feel very emotionally safe. They dare to ask questions, or right? it's never a silly question. They, uh, they are not afraid of making mistakes, and the people are also afraid to give feedback. That's how they're able to progress together as a group. So essentially, they have really high team emotional intelligence. Um, and on an individual level, according to uh, researchers in positive psychology, led by Sean Anker, who works at Stanford, um, Harvard, the, we're actually able to achieve higher level success if you're happy versus how our traditional belief suggests a lot of people are chasing happiness by becoming more successful. And that supposedly doesn't really work as well. So if, we're, if we want to be successful, we need to be happier. Then it comes back to our inner world, right? Having better emotional intelligence. Um, so before diving in, uh, I just want to clarify what emotional intelligence really entails. Um, according to Daniel Goleman, um, emotional intelligence has five elements to it. It has self-awareness. Um, sorry. So two pillars, the self and the other. And within self, we have self awareness and self-regulation. Also, I would put motivation here. For other, we have social skills and empathy. So um, it's probably not hard to see how by having better emotional intelligence, better social skills and empathy, you will become a better team player, right? Contribute to better team environments. And on the self front, being able to understand your own emotions and self-manage will enable you to have better social skills and empathy. So everything goes hand in hand. Um, 
And because we only have limited time today, and this is a very expensive topic, I'm just going to dive into one small section of social skills. So when we look at social skills, a big part of it comes down to communication skills. right? And uh, in communication, we have two sides. One is us expressing ourselves, the speaking, and uh, the other side of listening. So today, uh, I will be talking about listening skills. There are five levels of listening, right? Uh, I would like to demonstrate the five levels. So I need help from some volunteers. Um, you can sit where you are. We're just going to have a talk, really. Um, and uh, before we start, I just want to say the conversation wouldn't, because we don't have time to have a full conversation. So there will be, you know, short in some ways. And to indicate that we stop a demo session, I'll do this. Um, okay, so... Uh, Who's happy to have a chat? <laughs> oh, great. Wonderful. Um, what's your name? Marilyn. Marilyn. Hi. Hi. Um, so, could you tell me about your weekend, please? My weekend? Well, uh, Friday night started out pretty well. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. My phone's beeping. Ugh. Okay. Yeah, no, my phone's beeping. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Oh, no, okay. no. Sorry. Okay, cool. Uh, so Friday night, uh, I went to South Bank and uh, I drank with my friends that I used to work with. Oh, shit, my phone. My phone's beeping. <laughs> sorry, that was actually the demo. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, how did that make you feel? Rubbish. <laughs> I really wanted to tell you my story of how my Friday night went. I, I'm, I'm, I promise I'll make up for it. Okay. Very quickly, in, in a short while. But thank you for the first part. You're welcome. So that's the level one of listening. <laughs> and you can see that made the person feel very terrible. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to erase this and just... Uh... <laughs> so it starts at the low end. So the first level, I uh, interrupted. So interruption. So just as... Uh, a warning, the second volunteer will also have not too good of an experience. <laughs> who's, uh, who's willing to, uh, to have a chat in public again? <laughs> Great. So, what's your name? Zach. My name's Emmett. Emmett? Emmett. Hi, uh, Emmett. Can you tell me about uh, the last holiday you had? It was a nice little trip to Ireland where my family lives. Uh, we went to a lovely little festival together. Uh, festival? Oh, I went to a festival recently too. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I know. Okay, great. <laughs> Again, I'll make up for it later. So, second level, how did that make you feel? Like I wasn't being listened to. Yeah, definitely not. So, um, a way to call this second level listening is hijacking. I basically started talking about myself, right? Okay. Third level. It gets slightly better. And just in advance, the fourth and fifth level are of equal importance, and they're definitely the highest level of listening skills, right? Um, a third volunteer, please. <laughs> okay, Zach. fill in. All right. Okay, so um, this time, um, could you tell me about uh, some challenges you're having in your coding project? You do work as a software engineer, right? I do, yeah. Um, sometimes the documentation is quite hard, and I'm, I'm reading through. I don't know how to install something, and yeah, I might have to ask people ask what people. to do. Um, documentation. You know what else you can do is documentation. You can have an intern do it for you. You know, you don't have to do it yourself. Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Maybe. Okay, stop, <laughs> stop there. How did that make you feel? I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't being listened to. Is that the? Yeah. No. <laughs> The, the first three levels of listening have the same issue, right? The person didn't feel listened to. And what I did just now is I gave unsolicited advice. And this actually happens very often in our conversation with friends, if, if we really self-reflect. I mean, I definitely do that. I'm totally guilty of it. 
Okay, now we're going to the better part. And I said I would make up for the <laughs> bad conversations we had earlier. So, Marilyn, would you like to come on? I mean, or, or you can stay there. <laughs> I get buzzed. I don't know if I want to come back, but sure. I, I promise now it will be better. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, you're learning coding now, right? Yes. yes. Can you tell me what you love about learning coding? Um, what I love is the idea that you can go from absolute zero or like minus 110,000 um, to feeling like you just built the next Twitter because you understood one line of code. So yeah, I, I like the feeling of anything is possible based on what you know rather than who, how, like when you know. Great. Tell me more. Okay, cool. Um, so if I give a, an example, um, I really, uh, so at the weekend on Saturday morning, I was meant to do this whole vegan fest, but I couldn't go because my friend cancelled on me. So I decided to um, build my own portfolio of stuff that I could do. So I'm not going to lie to you, it's not like by any means very kind of like raw and uh, super special, but it was a basic one page site. Um, that just listed all the stuff that I knew, what I was learning, um, what I could do, and what I was in interested in. So for me to think of where I was maybe, I don't know, like a year ago, um, not understanding what like a, um, a pixel was or what an HTML tag was, to be in a position where I could essentially build a website from scratch by myself in the space of an hour while I was in bed on a Saturday morning and I could create something that represented how I felt and who I was. Um, when I opened up that file in Safari, sorry, when I opened <laughs> that file in Safari and I could essentially see everything that I created over the last hour and it was all mine and there weren't any sort of like tricks or kind of hacks. I wasn't using kind of like a, um, I don't know, like a, a framework or something else to cheat my way. It was just purely what I had built with my own knowledge inside. I mean, that felt amazing. So that's what I'm doing. And that's what I think the rest of us are kind of here for now. Great, great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> How did that make you feel? Uh, that made me feel amazing. I felt invincible, like on top of the world. I mean, I was in bed in my pajamas. I hadn't brushed my teeth. I looked awful, but I felt I felt like Zuckerberg. It was amazing. And how did the conversation make you feel? <laughs> this conversation, uh, I'm gonna like a little bit nervous. <laughs> yeah, okay. a lot. Nervous. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. Um, don't. So good. So good. Um, so. What I did, I was ready to give her the space to talk, right? And I encouraged her to tell me more by eliciting, saying, tell me more, actually, just that. Um, so the fourth level of listening is attentive listening. Just the whole focus is on the speaker, right? I didn't have to do anything. I was listening, just that. Last level, okay, I'll make up. <laughs> On the second one here on the mic. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> I would get out, but it's really hard to get out these beanbags. Sorry. <laughs> no so uh, I believe you've been working as an uh, engineer for a while now. A little under a year. A little under a year. Um, so could you maybe tell me about how it's been like for you? Sure. It's been very challenging, but very satisfying. Much like you were saying, like it is quite a powerful feeling to go um, from not really knowing your ass from your elbows to be able to build something, even build something well, you know, if I'm feeling um, quite pleased with myself. Very uh, satisfying and pleased with yourself. It has been very satisfying, yes. So it certainly can be. It can also be hugely frustrating and make me question all my life decisions sometimes. But, <laughs> um, you know, I haven't been burnt out yet, so it seems to be going well enough. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. My pleasure. Um, <laughs> so that's a short demo for level five of listening. Um, it's active listening. Uh, what I did, besides paying attention, is I showed him that I was paying attention by reflecting back the exact same words he used. Right? 
And another element of active listening is also clarifying. Should he have said something that's a little unclear to me, I would have summarized and made sure we have the shared understanding. All right, so uh, before continuing, I just want to do a quick show of hands. Like, who's guilty of doing level one of listening? <laughs> wow. <laughs> level two? <laughs> level three? Oh, <laughs> okay, last, uh, equally important, attentive and active listening. We do that sometimes, right? Great, great, so <laughs> we're starting from a place of self-awareness, really. I think, for me personally, when I first came across this five level of listening, because I worked in sales before, I knew about like, active listening, and I do that in work setting, right? But when I'm with friends, mostly it's advice mode, which, you know, I'm, I'm very, like, I feel bad now after learning these two. And attentive listening, for me, was a new concept, because it really liberates you. You don't have to do much. I'm not saying you should drift away, right, when you're having a conversation. You're still there, but the responsibility, I mean, it's really just on the person talking. You don't, you just sit there and, and pay attention and just say, tell me more, and that's it. There's no effort. If you just give it a try in the future when you meet a friend who has something to complain about, you know, you know that they're not expecting you to give advice, they just want to be listened to, and you don't even have to do active listening, and you just say, tell me more. They're gonna tell you afterwards, hopefully, it's gonna be the best conversation you've had. Right, it's happened to me, so <laughs> give that a go. All right, um, thank, thank you again to the volunteers. Yeah. And I think they shared some wonderful insight about learning coding, right? So students here, I want you to carry on with this. It's a wonderful journey you're on. Um, all right, so, oh, it's almost time. So just to um, highlight again, because I promise there will be um, concrete techniques you can use in your day-to-day -day life. Um, I already mentioned, when it comes to attentive listening, it's about inviting more information. And another thing to highlight is to know that silence is actually a good thing. So when you're having a conversation with your friend and it stops for a little bit, like just pay attention to the eye contact. If the person may be still processing some thought, you just don't speak yet. Because there is a trap in active listening, because you do the reflective listening, and you could jump in too soon. The person could still be thinking of something else to say. So allow silence, really do the attentive listening. And when the time is right, so when the person threw you that eye contact, be like, hey, I'm expecting you to say something, then you can summarize, clarify, and, uh, and then carry on. And this can be used in sales context, too. <laughs> um, right, so just to wrap up, uh, I think there are three key takeaways, right? One is uh, in emotional intelligence is really a skill that we can all improve upon. Um, and the second thing would be, once you have good self-awareness, that can be certainly help your personal life and then make you a better team player, so you'll perform better at work. And the last thing would be how to apply attentive and active listening in your day-to-day -day conversation. And you can do this from tomorrow when you're in a team meeting, you know, just allow your colleagues to really speak. Great, thank you, thank you everyone. We've got some time for some questions, oh. if you want to do any questions. Yeah, anyone has questions? Does anyone? <laughs> oh, great. On. Hi. Oh, come in. Okay. okay, sorry. What's the source of this information? Can you please, like, send it on Slack or somewhere where, oh. where to read further if I wanted to know more? Yeah. Sure, um, and just for some background, um, so I mentioned earlier I had some like emotional struggles once I started working as an engineer full time. So I, besides reading books on psychology and emotional intelligence, I also went uh, for life coaching. 
And that's when the five levels of listening came clear to me. And um, I will certainly share um, some links to books if you're interested in reading more. Please. And uh, yeah. there's actually a movement um, in education. They're trying to teach students emotional intelligence because traditionally there was this assumption that a student wouldn't be able to do math without a teacher teaching him or her, you know. But uh, we somehow thought kids would know how to self-manage. That's a false assumption. And then uh, people in education are realizing it. So in the US, they're doing uh, programs um, to teach social skills to students. Thank you.